Uh, so yeah, my name is Pau Ferreira. It's a pleasure for me to give the uh, last talk of this nice uh, conference. And uh, yeah, I will be speaking about the work we did in the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics in the group of uh, Gerhard Rempe about a very uh, subtle optical uh, detector, which is a detector which can detect uh, photonic qubits without destroying the photon and without destroying the, the quantum information. Uh, be, but before starting to speak about the detector, I will uh, uh, give some words on, on the setup, on our experimental setup, which uh, you can see here in, in the background of my slide. Uh, so the experiment that we have is an experiment where we uh, have a single atom uh, coupled to a high finesse uh, optical cavity. And this is a system which yeah, has been studied a lot in the last 20, 30 uh, years. And what we are doing at the moment is to try to use this uh, system as a good high quality interface uh, between uh, qubit states encoded in, in photons, which are good for uh, communication and uh, qubit states encoded in atoms, which are good and for storage and processing of quantum uh, information. Uh, moreover, such a system provides a, a high nonlinearity of uh, at the single photon level, and such effects have been used in, in the last years to implement uh, a variety of, of gates, for instance, quantum gates, uh, quantum qubit gates between photons and atoms, or uh, qubit gates between photons mediated by the atom, or uh, better recently, uh, a qubit gate between uh, two atoms, uh, remotely separated atoms uh, mediated by, by a photon. Uh, so the, the experimental platform where such experiments have been uh, performed uh, looks like in, in this picture. So at the center, uh, yeah, the main building block of the system are these uh, high finesse uh, cavities, uh, which are based on bulk uh, substrates with uh, super polished uh, surfaces and high reflective uh, coating, which uh, provide these this, uh, high quality mirrors for, for the cavities. Uh, however, our uh, cavities are a bit different. They are based on optical uh, fibers. So these are fibers where the, the fiber tip uh, has been machined with a CO2 laser to give it a high quality spherical surface with the uh, laser is uh, coated with high reflective uh, coating and, and this uh, provides the, the optical uh, cavity. Uh, so having such uh, fiber uh, cavities gives a few advantages and the most important ones is that uh, we can get a much uh, smaller uh, mode uh, volumes uh, than what is possible with, with, with the bulk mirror uh, cavities. And this provides much stronger atom photon uh, interaction. And the second big advantage, which is maybe the most important for, for us, is that because of the, the small uh, transversal size of the fibers, uh, we can have two cavities with a small, small, uh, small, uh, small mode volumes. Uh, coupled to the same atom, so in, in the high cooperativity uh, regime. Uh, so yeah, coming back to the to the original picture that I showed in, in the first slide, if we zoom at, at the center, we can see these uh, four uh, fiber uh, tips put, put together. Uh, so if, if we take an image with, uh, with some magnification, we can see the, the, the four fiber tips with yeah, some uh, curved uh, tips. And which form these, these two cavities. And, and then yeah, we have a single atom at, at the center, uh, which is coupled to these two cavities. And the, the motivation to, to, to use such uh, a system is that now we can explore novel uh, cavity QED schemes where two transitions of uh, the single atom are uh, coupled to, yeah, to each of the cavities in this high uh, cooperativity regime. And our goal is to explore a novel uh, uh, quantum information schemes based on this uh, platform. And then yeah, one of these schemes is the one I will be presenting here, which is this non-destructive detection detector of photonic uh, qubits. Uh, so some motivation for, for, for uh, building such uh, a detector. So one of the main motivations that, that we uh, had is that if you can detect photonic qubits without, uh, without destroying them, uh, then you can uh, monitor the, the loss of, of such photonic qubits uh, in quantum communication, which is one of the, the main uh, limitations. And by tracking this loss, you can, in some situations, uh, mitigate the, the problem. 
So um, such a detector can help in, in different situations. For instance, it can help in the spending time and uh, expensive uh, resources. And one example here would be, imagine you have a long uh, distance atom entangled state that you want to use to teleport a photonic qubit. You want to use this, this long distance entanglement when the photonic qubit is, is there. And this you could uh, certify with, with such an undestructive uh, qubit uh, detector. Uh, such a detector has also been proposed to uh, help uh, improve uh, loss sensitive qubit uh, measurements. And here, uh, one simple example would be if you have a, a qubit measurement which is uh, noisy, uh, then using such a non destructive detector, you can use it to only open the gate of your uh, qubit measurement when the photonic qubit is there and therefore reducing the, the, the noise of the, the measurement. And yeah, such detector has also been proposed for other things, like for instance, for QKD attacks, for in particular for the photon number splitting attack, one of the components is uh, such uh, non-destructive qubit uh, detector. Uh, so yeah, there are some proposals on yeah, what you can do with such a detector. And there have also been some uh, experimental um, uh, attempts to maybe not uh, non-destructively detect the, the qubits, but uh, maybe to uh, at least uh, herald them. And some, some approaches uh, would be the following. So one can, for instance, perform a spontaneous parametric down conversion of photonic qubits, where one of the uh, down, down converted photons carries the qubit information and the other one uh, acts as a herald. Uh, there is also quite some work on heralded qubit amplifiers, which is a kind of heralded uh, teleportation. Uh, one can also use a cross phase uh, modulation. And there is also some, some work on heralded uh, quantum memories, which can also be used to herald uh, photonic qubits. Uh, but most of these approaches, they have uh, severe limitations in terms of yeah, the, the efficiency of the heralding and, and the fidelity of the output uh, qubit. And moreover, in most of these approaches, the, yeah, the, the photonic qubit is destroyed uh, during the heralded uh, process, during the heralding process, and, and later uh, re-emitted. Uh, so our approach is, is a bit different and it's based on, on previous uh, work on the quantum non demolition detector of, of, uh, of single photons, which was done in the microwave uh, regime in the group of Serge Arroche and in the uh, optical regime in, in our group some, some years ago. And our idea is the following. The idea is that we uh, send photonic uh, qubits uh, to one of our uh, cavities and reflected, and then that this uh, reflection mechanism leaves a trace on, on the single atom, and that then uh, we can read the we can read out this this trace uh, via the second uh, cavity. Uh, so, yeah, in more detail, how does this uh, interaction between the photon and the atom uh, happen? So, for this, you need an atom with three levels: two ground states and uh, one excited state. And you need a cavity which is single sided. So this means that uh, one of the mirrors has a bigger, a much bigger transmission than the other mirror. Um, uh, yes. And in such a way that when the atom is in the state which is not coupled to, to the cavity, a photon which would uh, come from the high transmi transmittive uh, mirror would enter the cavity, would bounce back and forth, and then leave the cavity through the same uh, mirror. So it would be uh, reflected, but with a pi phase shift in the case that the uh, cavity, that the photon is resonant to the, the cavity. Uh, however, if the atom is in, in the other ground state, in state uh, zero, so it's coupled to the, the cavity, then there is the normal mode splitting of the atom photon uh, states due to the strong interaction between the atom and, and the photon, uh, which in such a way that there is no available uh, state for the photon to, to enter the the cavity and then this photon is reflected directly in, in the first mirror without acquiring any phase shift. So then the, the idea is to put the atom in, in a superposition state between the two uh, ground states, zero and one, then to reflect uh, the photonic uh, qubit, such a way that then the component with the atom in state uh, one acquires a phase shift. And if the uh, state of the photon and the state of the atom remain uh, separable, then this pi phase shift uh, uh, upon the reflection of, of the photon, then this pi phase shift, you, there is a pi phase shift on the state of, of the atom. So yeah, this is what we do in, in our experiment. We, uh, yeah, we apply microwave pi over two pulse in, uh, to our atom, which brings it in a superposition. Then we 
reflect a photonic polarization qubit, which is actually a weak uh, coidant uh, state. Uh, the third step is then to apply a second microwave uh, rotation to the atom in such a way that the, uh, the, yeah, the atomic states in the equator then rotate into the poles. And then yeah, using uh, atomic uh, state detection, fluorescence atomic state detection, we can distinguish whether the atom is in state zero and one, and therefore whether a, a photonic qubit was reflected by our uh, system. And yeah, we use uh, a rubidium 87 atom and having two cavities uh, allow us to put the, the qubit cavity in a transition, which is uh, suitable for the interaction between the atom and the uh, photonic uh, qubit and the uh, other uh, cavity, the state detection cavity in a transition, in a cycling transition, which is then suitable for the fluorescence state detection of the state of, of the atom in the last uh, step. So without giving too much technical uh, details, I just speak a bit about our setup. So this is a picture of our uh, the inside of our vacuum chamber. Uh, we have some atomic dispensers, some vibration isolation to have stable cavities. Uh, you can see in white the, the big roof holders for the fiber tips. Uh, we have yeah, in orange uh, some microwave antennas. We have 11 kids actuators, uh, seven slip stick positioners to bring the fiber tips uh, together and four uh, shear pieces to actively stabilize the, the cavities. Uh, we have also two mirrors to bring some uh, mod beams uh, uh, into yeah, one centimeter uh, above the cavity plane where we create a cloud of laser cooled uh, atoms. And then we release these uh, atoms in, into the cavity plane and we aim yeah, with some dipole traps and cooling beams to trap a single atom uh, into the cavity plane, which you can see here uh, in a zoom uh, image. So yeah, we have these two uh, cavities with a finesse of around 15,000. Uh, and yeah, we also have an imaging uh, system. So we have a custom aspheric uh, lens, which allows us to collect light from uh, the single atom with a numerical aperture of 0.3, and which allows us to image this single atom into an EMCCD uh, camera. Okay, so to, to implement this non-destructive detector, we basically need uh, three ingredients. Uh, we need a good atomic uh, rotation of, of the ground states, and this we do with microwaves. And uh, this you can see in this plot, we can achieve a pi pulse in 12 uh, microseconds with a probability of 97%. Uh, uh, we need a good atomic uh, state detection. And uh, so here you can see the fluorescence uh, counts that we get when the atom is in a state uh, zero, so we get mostly uh, zero counts. And when the atom is in state one, uh, then we get in average 10 counts. This gives uh, a fidelity for the for the atomic state detection of 98%. Uh, and then we need this, uh, the third and most important ingredient is this atomic state dependent uh, phase field. And for this, we need the reflectivity of our atom cavity system to be negative when the atom is in state one, so when it's uncoupled and uh, positive when the atom is in uh, state uh, zero. So when the atom is in state one and the cavity is uncoupled, the reflectivity is given by the uh, mode matching between the fiber and the, the cavity mode and between uh, by the transmission ratio between the two uh, mirrors. And for the reflectivity in the couple case, the important parameter would be the atom photon uh, cooperativity. And here we see a spectrum of the reflection of our system. Uh, we can see the normal mode splitting characteristic of the strong atom photon interaction when the atom is in the coupled state. And in green, we can see the cavity spectrum when the cavity is uh, empty. And from this uh, plot, we can extract these figures of merit. We have a mode matching of 92%. Uh, we have a transmission ratio of 80%, and we have an atom photon cooperativity of a one, 1 1.7. And here, what is important is to notice is that the mode matching and the, the, tr the transmission ratio of the mirrors, this having high values for these quantities will uh, lead to low, lower values of the cooperativity. And therefore, it's important to design your, your system in such a way that these uh, three parameters are uh, high at, at the same time. Uh, so yeah, after characterizing the main ingredients, we can then perform the experiments. So we initially yeah, apply the pi over two pulse, we bring the atom in superposition, we reflect the photon in polarization uh, qubits, uh, which then uh, bring the atom in, uh, in superposition with the opposite phase. We apply the second pi over two pulse, and then uh, what we see when we perform the atomic state detection is that 
when no photonic qubits are reflected in the system, then we have a high level of the fluorescent scouts, which means yeah, that the atom is in state one. And uh, when photonic qubits are reflected in the system, we see a low level of the fluorescent uh, counts, which means that yeah, the atom is in state zero and which heralds the presence of the photonic uh, qubits. And yeah, then we can characterize some quantities, so some important uh, parameters uh, for a detector. Uh, so the most important parameter would be the efficiency. So we can look uh, once a photonic qubit is reflected in our cavity, which is the probability that we detected it with the atom, and this is uh, 80%. And then there are different uh, other ways that we can define the efficiency. For instance, we can look, which is the probability that a photonic qubit is uh, reflected once we have detected, or we can uh, look at the probability to detect it, or that the qubit survives the, the reflection uh, once there was a photonic qubit at the input, and all this efficiency are in this 30-50% uh, 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 range. Uh, dark count is another important parameter of a detector, and we have a dark count uh, probability of 3%. This means yeah, the detector gives a detection event in 3% in of the cases when there is no input photonic qubit. And as we are detecting photonic qubits, the fidelity is also uh, important. And this is what we see here. We see the quantum tomography of uh, yeah, six orthogonal uh, polarizations. And uh, we see that the polarizations are oh, slightly, uh, yes, I will finish. Read your conclusions. Uh, OK, I finished this slide and, and I go to conclusions. Uh, yeah, so we see that the fidelity, the, the polarizations are slightly rotated. So we have, um, yes. Um, um, fidelity of 98% for the diagonal polarizations, a slightly lower fidelity for the other polarizations, which yeah, overall gives a fidelity of 96% or 98% uh, if, if we would rotate the polarizations at its, as, as it's possible with a wave plate. Um, so yeah, with this, these are the main results. I, I just had a few slides on the imperfections, which I will skip. And in the end, we also ask ourselves uh, whether such a detector with such imperfections is useful. So we studied some uh, situations and we saw that already with such imperfections, uh, such detector could help in some quantum communication uh, schemes. And yeah, I reached the conclusion. So I spoke about our system with cross fiber cavities, how we implemented uh, such an undestructive uh, photonic uh, qubit detector. Uh, I uh, briefly mentioned the, the characterization and imperfections of our system. And yeah, I didn't have time to speak about the different uh, schemes that we think our detector could, could uh, improve. So with this, I finish. I would just like to thank uh, the team which was involved in this experiment. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. It's a very impressive work a nice talk. Do you have questions? May I ask a question? Yeah, so uh, the first question is that uh, I remember that in these kinds of cavities, there were always uh, big cavity losses because of just of shaping with CO2 laser the, the profile of the fiber. That's why first I would like to ask what is the value of kappa? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a good... Loss. What is mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good point. I mentioned the advantage of such uh, cavities, but I didn't mention the disadvantage, and this is indeed the, uh, the losses. So yeah, we have a much bigger kappa as in the other uh, systems. The kappa is around 60 uh, megahertz, uh, so it's around the factor uh, 10 uh, worse than, than uh, uh, the values for, for the previous generation of uh, cavities. Uh, however, this is compensated by the higher uh, G. So in the end, we can reach uh, similar uh, cooperativities because we have a higher uh, atom photon uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. well, if I can, I can. I would also ask uh, because you haven't used the information about the scattered light. Can you engineer maybe using this information some states of the atoms if you have? For instance, two atoms in the cavity, you measure the scattered light, and then you could change the state of the two atoms to have some interesting entangled states. Is it, it's, is it possible to, to have two atoms and then to use these schemes? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, indeed, we um, yeah we have some uh, some uh, uh, 
preliminary, yeah, some some initial work with with uh, two atoms. Indeed, you can, uh, yeah, we we can individually address uh, two different uh, atoms. Uh, you can apply such uh, reflection uh, schemes to to mediate uh, gates uh, between um, uh, atoms. Uh, so far, the the experiments with uh, two atoms were. Um, not too advanced because um, yeah, of the way we were trapping the atoms, which was probabilistic and, and therefore having yeah, the time during which we would have two atoms in, in the cavity was not uh, too long. But, but yeah, now we are um, uh, uh, performing the technical improvements on, on the setup with atomic tweezers and, and so on to, to keep two atoms in the cavity for a longer time where, where in principle yeah, we could do more, more advanced uh, uh, schemes. But yeah, it's definitely uh, possible to have two atoms in a cavity and in to individually address them and, and try to entangle them, uh, to entangle them by reflecting photons in, in the cavity and, and so on. Thank you. We have a question from Pavel Horodetsky. Uh, because I missed the point. Is it so that you uh, detect any qubit state, photon qubit state, I mean, any superposition of vacuum and first Fox state? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure if I understood the question. If, if we attack any... I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, so, so suppose you, you have the field and uh, um, I'm saying the non-demolition measurement of the field. Is it possible to measure the field in non-demolition way uh, according to any basis? I'm saying, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and on the block sphere, is it possible to do that in the scheme? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, indeed. So we we can measure the. Um, so what is important is that the decoupling. So there are several things which are important. Uh, it's important that the the uh, atom couples to the the qubit uh, equally. So um, yes, yeah, so you see the two polarizations. The the two. Uh, so all the polarizations coupled to the atom uh, equally. That's why we, we choose this uh, transition and why we put the atom in in this state. It's so it's it's also because yeah, otherwise you would get some entanglement between the atom and the photon, which which you don't want to to have. Uh, and yes, yeah, so if if you do it in such a way, then any polarization uh, you will be able to detect any polarization yeah, without affecting the the polarization. In in, in our experiment is not. So yeah, this is what we aim to do. In practice, we have some, uh, we didn't do it perfectly. So we have, for instance, a bit of birefringence in, in our cavity in such a way that the atom interacts slightly different with different um, uh, polarizations. And that's why we see that, um, I show this um, at the end, that, that yeah, when we then reconstruct the state of the, the photonic qubits, we see a small uh, rotation of the polarizations and also a bit of, uh, shrinking of the, so we lose a bit of fidelity. So it's it's not perfect, but yeah, if everything was perfect, then uh, all, all the qubits would um, be detected uh, with the same probability and, and keeping the same uh, fidelity. And just maybe very naive question. So um, is it possible somehow to extend this, uh, this um, experiment, this kind of uh, method to detect states of, say, um, the, the, the specific modes of, of, of light. So, for instance, you know, when, when, when you treat the spatial modes and so on, and, and you want to do it in a non demolition way. Um, you could imagine, right, that, that, that you want to, to really to, to detect the, 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 the state of light in the non demolition way, say, for instance, spatial modes. You have superposition of the two, and you really want to do the same in this Hilbert space. Is it? possible to imagine that to extend this technique like that? So in our systems, yeah, we, we have fiber cavities and and yeah, this, well, the cavity and the fiber, they are a single mode in the spatial degree of freedom. That's uh, true, that's true. But that's my question, actually. Can you go beyond that? Um, yeah, it's a good question. If you would have a cavity that supports different uh, spatial modes, uh, whether this would be uh, possible. Um, yeah, I guess if, if the coupling with the atom is the same for all the special modes, and if you can engineer uh, such a multi-mode uh, cavity, I guess it, it would be um, uh, 
possible, um, but yeah, not not directly with with our system uh, for sure. Uh, what we could do is to to uh, for different temporal modes, this we we could um, uh, do it. So yeah, something we uh, check, for instance, is to yeah to send different. Uh, photons with different uh, temporal wave shapes and saw that the, the wave shape was uh, preserved. Uh, so in, in this, in the time degree of freedom, maybe there are things which which can be done. But in the in the special degree of freedom, at least with our systems, we are uh, quite uh, limited. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for the questions. Thank you very much. So I think it's time to. Thank Pao again and all the speakers. We had very nice discussions. Thank you for that as well.